Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Um, I'm now answering a question from the textbook of the International A Level LXL Pearson's um, P1 book from chapter 2, which is about quadratics. And this question here is telling us it's from exercise 2E, it's question 7, part E. One of the students has asked me to answer this question. Um, and it's an important question here. It says, find all roots of the following functions, and this is part E, k of x equals x minus 7 times root x plus 10. Okay, so first of all, the roots of a function are when uh, are the values of x when that function is equal to 0. So the values of x when y is equal to 0. So we've got to find when k of x is equal to 0. You can also say that is mean when y is equal to 0, because this is the function you can say y equals k of x. So we're going to find when this function is equal to 0. So you have x minus 7 times the square root of x plus 10 equals 0. Now this is another type of question which is called a disguised quadratic. Okay, because we notice that the term here, x, x is equal to the square root of x squared. If you square the square root of x, you're going to get x. So this is a disguised quadratic. Okay, so what I can do is I can say, all right, let's call the square root of x a letter, for example, b. If the square root of x is b, then x is going to be b squared. So I can replace the x with b squared and the square root of x with b. Now I have something that looks like a quadratic. It looks very familiar to us as a quadratic. The reason why we did went through this is so that we can make it look like something familiar rather than something strange like it does in the beginning. So as I mentioned, if you can recognize that a term is the square of another term, x is the square of the root of x, we can call the root of x a letter b and therefore x will be the square of b because if you square root x you get x so therefore you square b you get b squared. So I can replace root x with b and I can replace the x with b squared. Okay, so now I can try to factorize this. When I factorize this, I see I have two values um, that multiply to give you 10 and add to give you negative 7. Well, that's b minus 2 and b minus 5. So here we can say b is equal to 2 and b is equal to 5. Now, that's not our final answer because we have to go on. Um, to, you know, we have to find x. We don't have to find b. There's no b's in the question. We put b there to make it look something, um, look like something we can solve easily. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, b is equal to root x. So I can replace the b with root x. So root x is equal to 2, and the square root of x is equal to 5. All right, this question doesn't have a problem, all right? But some questions will have a problem, so I'm going to explain to you. When you write down the square root of x, when it's already given in the question, square root of x Right, in the question. It's referring to the positive square root of x. So this means the positive square root of x equals 2. Well, that makes sense because, you know, a positive square root of x is a positive number. That makes sense. So if you want to find x, we've got to square both sides. So x is equal to 2 squared, which is 4. And the positive square root of x is equal to 5. Well, again, if you um, think about it, it makes sense. The positive square root of x is a positive number. That's fine. So your answer will come out as x equals the square of 5, which is 25. So these two answers are both acceptable in this particular question. But there might be another question where you end up with, for example, um, b equals, say, minus 3. Right? This is like, this is, we finished this question now, I'm just giving you an example. And then we've got to say, okay, the square root of x is equal to negative 3. Now remember, the square root of x, when there's nothing written in front of it, means the positive square root of x. So if you got an answer like this, in, in one of your answers, and it said the square root of x equals negative 3. This means the positive square root of x equals negative 3. That doesn't make sense, so there's no solution to that. Okay, in this case, we don't have that problem, but if something like this occurs, we'll have a problem. We can't accept that answer. We can only accept the answer which says the positive square root of x equals a positive value. Okay, so there's the answer to part E of question number 7, exercise 2E from the chapter... Um, on quadratics chapter 2 from the P1 International A-Level textbook. Um, other questions from this particular chapter of this book can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. And other questions about quadratics in general 
from um, you know P P two P one sorry can be found in this uh, playlist that should appear over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link, and if you want to find other material, past paper questions I've answered uh, from all the different uh, units from P one to P four and S one and M one of the International A level board and also some IGCSE papers then you can check the description of the video um, thank you for watching